All right, welcome everyone. I'm Brittany. I'm the PACAC facilitator for this session. Um, before I turn everything over to our wonderful presenters tonight um, to learn a little bit more about Muhlenberg, I just wanted to go over a quick couple of things with you. Um, so first, if you have some questions, we'd love for you to ask them, but please use the Q&A chat at the bottom. Your microphones and cameras are not on, um, just so you know that. Um, and then sign up for more sessions. There's tons more sessions left. There's about a week and a half. Um, so please feel free to register for additional sessions. And then this session is gonna be recorded and you can revisit it on the PACAC website after um, about a week or so it'll be posted. So without further ado, I will turn it over to our wonderful presenters tonight. All right. Welcome everyone to the presentation about Muhlenberg College. We're very excited to connect with you. Um, even though it's virtual this year, we'd love to get to connect with you in person, but certainly wanna do so in, in a safe and a healthy way. Uh, my name is Chelsea Schoen and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions. Um, I particularly represent the Southeast counties of Pennsylvania. So um, Fox, Montgomery, Delaware, Chester and Philadelphia counties, um, as well as some Jersey and Delaware. Um, and I'm joined here today by two colleagues and so I'll have them come on and introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Bailey Fulginetti. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions at Muhlenberg. Um, I'm also a proud Muhlenberg alum. I graduated in 2018 as a double major in Music and Media and Communications. Um, and I work mostly with students on the Western side of the state. Um, so I will also do some other travel in Ohio and Connecticut and New England, but um, I will work with the folks on the Western end and I'll pass it over to Stacey. Hi everyone, I'm Stacey Carpenty. I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Admissions here at Muhlenberg. I travel to the Lehigh Valley, so our local territory, as well as Northeast PA and Central PA. Um, and I also travel to New Jersey, but those are my, my three PA areas that I, um, that I travel to. And we're super excited to share more about Muhlenberg with you this evening. All right, so um, to kick us off, I think it's, you know, if you're exploring other colleges within Pennsylvania, maybe other small colleges, other liberal arts colleges, um, you're going to find that there are a lot of schools that fit those criteria. And so whenever we're talking about what makes Muhlenberg distinct, um, there's definitely a handful of answers, but I think the one that you would hear echoed in the greatest volume across our campus is truly the sense of community. Um, and communities are really hard to sell, especially when everything's virtual right now. So hopefully throughout the session, we'll kind of get to um, demonstrate it for you and kind of really put that, breathe that life into it. Um, but community at Muhlenberg is something that is just, um, it, it's really palpable, right? If you are a visitor on campus and you look a little unsure where you're going, our current students are going to approach you and say, hey, can I point you in the right direction? Um, if you're just walking down academic row, you're going to notice that people are just going to smile at you, even if they have no idea who you are. Uh, even right now, during COVID-19, all of our students and community members wear masks. And so I've noticed that instead of smiling, since it's not exactly quite visible, um, our students are waving or they're saying hi. And I think it's really important to know that even during this uncertainty, during this new normal, our community is still prioritizing each other. Right? And we're still finding moments to make sure that every student feels like they matter on this campus. Um, so hopefully you'll get to experience it in person where, you know, you're walking around campus and you'll find that every door is magically held open for you because that's a tradition that we have. Um, or you'll notice just in the way in which students interact with one another and with their faculty and with their peers. But it's truly a place where community is part of everything that we do inside the classroom and outside. Um, it really just opens up so many doors of opportunities for, for our students through the relationships that they build on our campus. So I'll share a little bit about academic life at Muhlenberg. And I think there's a handful of things that really make academic life pretty unique on our campus. Uh, we are a liberal arts college, and so you're gonna take a variety of classes. Um, but I think it's exciting to know that Muhlenberg is a school that's known for some pretty different things. Uh, we're very well known for our pre-med preparation, and that comes along with it a, a strength in the natural sciences and biology. Um, our med school acceptance rates are always in the 85 to 95% range. So it's truly a, a program where there's strength and there's just an amazing network out there to support our students. At the same time, we are nationally ranked for our performing arts program and have been for about a decade. And so typically students think that like the arts and sciences cannot come together, but on our campus, it happens every single day and it's a really exciting combination. Um, I think having a school that's known for things that are on two different ends of the spectrum really just shapes who we are as, as learners and as an academic community. So it's exciting to know that you're not just gonna be surrounded by STEM kids. 
Uh, you're not just going to have artists in all your classes. It's really going to be this diverse um, varietal mix of different perspectives, backgrounds, interests, and skills. And that makes every classroom experience just a little bit more interesting. Um, so when you're in a neuroscience class and you have a musician pipe up with their idea, right, that now broadens the perspectives and the opinions and voices that you get to hear. So I think having such a, a span of academic interest is something that's special, but it also means that students are actually able to explore these things. At Muhlenberg, we're not trying to make you something that you're not. We wanna take your interests and your skills and we wanna bring out the best in you. And so that means providing you with an academic curriculum that's really flexible and allows you to pursue those interests, um, even if they're on totally different ends of the spectrum. So typically we have about a third of our students who will double major. And sometimes these include things that might go hand in hand, right, theater and dance, business and economics. Um, but at the same time, you're going to find that students at Muhlenberg are also doing double majors in physics and theater or biochemistry and dance. And they're still graduating in four years. So if any parents or guardians are worried about that, don't you worry. Our advisors and our faculty are ready to make sure that you're able to study what you want. Um, and again, to make it meaningful, right, and to give you so many hands-on experiences to accomplish this. The active learning style is also something that's really important. So inside the classroom, you can bet that you're going to find opportunities to practice these hands-on skills. So within the sciences, lab components, within theater and dance, right, performance-based classes, within business, market simulations, right, and project-based learning. So no matter what it is that you're thinking of studying, just know that you're not going to be right passive. Um, you're not just going to be listening in a lecture hall for four years. Um, but you're really going to have your voice shape the curriculum, right? And you're going to be an active participant in your education and have that ownership over it, which is exciting. Active opportunities happen outside the classroom as well. So we are really um, a proponent of finding students research opportunities on campus and funding them for them, um, connecting you with internships or encouraging you to study abroad for a semester and gain some really interesting experiences and cultural competency. So just know that whether it's in the classroom or outside, that we want to make sure that you're doing things um, in a really experiential way and that we're going to provide a lot of opportunities with impact. I think the last thing to note about our academic life is really just the role that our faculty play. Um, I think you're probably familiar if you're looking at smaller schools that like, yeah, my faculty member is going to know my name. Um, and that 100% is true. But your faculty is going to know a little bit more about you too. Um, they're going to know where you come from and what you want to do in the future and how they can be an integral part of helping you get there one day. Faculty members seek out students on campus, right? And so certainly while they're going to host office hours and you're free to, to drop on in, at the same time, faculty will find you, right? And they will talk to you about your strengths and your abilities and your skill set. Um, it's not uncommon for faculty to seek you out and say like, hey, I saw this fundraiser on campus. And I know you're involved with that group. How can I support you? Um, or again, like I know you're interested in this area of psychology, can I connect you with my colleague to talk about that experience more in depth? Um, and know that you can find a faculty mentor your first semester or at any point during your time on our campus. Um, we had one student, Thomas, who I always like to tell his story, but um, you know, within his first semester, he sort of accidentally registered himself for a writing intensive class. So it's writing intensive classes are intense. And so, uh, you know, he was a little nervous. He was the only first year student in the class. And instead of just like quietly withdrawing and never showing his face again, um, he decided to go and approach the faculty member, Dr. Hashim. And so he said, I'm not really sure where to start. Um, like I'm, I've never written a 25 page research paper in a matter of weeks. And now I suddenly have to do this after in my high school, I only wrote three page essays. Um, and Dr. Hashim said, no worries, right? Let's, let's set out times to meet. Let's figure out what's your topic. Let me show you how to find peer reviewed sources. Let's get you connected with the writing center so that they can do some of the mechanics look over as well. And so week by week they met and they were able to develop this paper that Thomas was really proud of and that he got a good grade on. But what was even more exciting was that during the Thanksgiving break of his first semester, Dr. Hashim emailed Thomas and said, that paper was so good. I'm actually going to send you to a political science conference and I'll present that paper to hundreds of your peers in the field. So just by seeking out that faculty member and not being afraid of forging that relationship, Thomas now had this professional experience before him that he was able to use. And he went on to present at a couple other conferences throughout his time on our campus. But um, again, just to recognize the power of relationships, that our faculty are not just there to, to grade your papers, right? But they really want to support you in both personal and professional ways. And I think those relationships are really a cornerstone to the Nuremberg experience, that over 90% of our students talking about having one or more mentors on our campus. And I think that's truly something that's emblematic and that really brings our community to life. 
touch a little bit on the sense of career center and, and the outcomes that our students go on to find. And so a lot of this kind of happens naturally through all those academic experiences I talked about. Um, when students are just happen to be engaged in research and internships and conferences, like they're already developing a, a pretty robust portfolio that they get to talk about, which is awesome. Um, but we also have an amazing career center that's there to support students at any point during their time at Muhlenberg and any point in time in their life once they're an alumni, which is exciting. So lots of different opportunities, but I think the cool thing is that our career center really, again, understands relationships. And so while they do a lot of the typical services, like looking over resumes, um, you know, sort of giving cover letter tips, um, hosting a whole database of, you know, you can see um, different internship and job post opportunities. At the same time, the heart of what they do is about relationships and giving our students ways to connect with professionals in the field to really develop a network and, and someone to connect with and again, an additional level of mentorship. So to know that we have internships that happen on our campus, across the US, even globally, that these opportunities are there for students. We do career road trips where we take students to major cities to shadow for different companies on site, right? And again, to get to ask some of those questions to help them navigate postgraduate life. Um, we have the Muhlenberg Network in which we provide right, professional or alumni or parent of alumni mentorship for our students. And so just to know that navigating postgraduate life can be a little scary, right, and a little unsure, um, but to know that you have a Muhlenberg community that surrounds you and to promote you professionally as well, um, and that you can always call upon those relationships to make sure that you're finding success in, in whatever picture that looks like for you. So now I'll toss it over to Bailey to talk more about the, the fun side of campus. So all the, the fun student campus life activities. Awesome, thanks Chelsea. Um, so yeah, to talk a little bit more about what Chelsea touched on a little bit earlier about this sense of community, I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, what does it feel like to be on campus and be a student on campus? So as you see in some of these photos, you can see that the doors on campus are red. Um, and I, I promise you this is not just sort of to be you know on brand with our cardinal and gray colors. Um, it actually um, dates back to our, our roots when we first opened. We were an all-male, all-Lutheran school and as you can probably guess we are no longer all-male and we are no longer all-Lutheran. Um, so currently on campus we um, have only about a third of our students still identify as Christian students. We have about a third of our students identify as Jewish students and about a third of our students um, identify as another religious group. Um, but I talk about the red doors because it's really important to student life. These red doors welcome you everywhere on campus. And that's sort of the idea of our social community. We are a welcoming, supportive bunch. And it's important for us to, if you have the moment to, and the opportunity to take the, the kind route, take the kind route. So these doors, we will open doors for a long time. We, our nickname is the Door Holding Campus. And if you guessed that we have that nickname because we hold doors for each other, congrats, you have figured it out. Um, but it's not uncommon to have someone, you know, stand in front of you 30 yards in front of you with their arm outstretched behind them, opening the door for you. And I highlight this just to say that that's who our community is, it's what student life is all about. It's if we are there to support each other, we're there to support each other. Um, and that's the, the idea behind the door holding tradition is just to take the moments to you know, extend that helping hand. We're all constantly moving. Muhlenberg students are incredibly busy. Um, they like to get involved. They like to go you know, from one class to another club meeting, to a rehearsal, to maybe a research opportunity. Um, but they're constantly moving, but they'll still take the 30 seconds to stop and wait for the person behind them, even if you've never met them. Um, and that idea of you know, whether, wherever you are, if you can be the helping hand, be the helping hand, is sort of what drives our social community. Um, so talking a little bit about, you know, what does it feel like to be a student at Muhlenberg? So we are um, about 2,100 students um, at Muhlenberg, um, and we have a big residential community. Um, so part of what makes, I think, the Muhlenberg community so strong is that we are all around each other a lot. And we figure, you know, if we've got to live with each other, we might as well be nice to each other. So we have around 90 to 91 percent of our students live on campus in any given year. Um, and we have guaranteed housing all four years. So there's a lot of students that stay on campus and in campus housing. So we're not a huge school that has, is sort of known as a suitcase school. That's not really us. Our students usually stay on campus um, over the weekends, at night. So it doesn't feel like, you know, as soon as classes are over, there's no one on campus because there's a lot happening on campus. There's a lot that our students are involved with. Um, just 
to highlight a couple of things um, that are going on on campus. So we have over 115 different clubs and organizations to get involved with on campus. From my experience as a student, um, in any given semester, I was involved anywhere from with eight to 10 clubs. So um, just if that gives you an idea, we like to be involved. Students like to, you know, really explore their interests. It's common, um, it's not uncommon to have students, you know, be in part of maybe a bio club and then also be a member of the theater organization and also be a part of the knitting club or something like that. Um, like Chelsea said, we're not trying to sort of pigeonhole you and put, you know, put all of your interests in one place and make you, you know, join all of these different clubs because you have a certain interest. That's not what we're in the game for. Um, we are really in, you know, in the game to make you you know, feel comfortable on campus. We want you to feel at home on campus. And a great way for us to do that is to make sure that you have a community and a group of folks that are interested in the same things you are. And you get to sort of just have fun on campus. You're not in school, you know, you're at school all the time, but you're not in class all the time. So there's a big portion of your day where you're gonna have to figure out something to do. And our students um, nine times out of 10 will choose to you know, connect with each other and get involved on campus. So with our clubs, not all of them are serious. So they're not all you know, academic oriented. They're not all major oriented. Like I said, we have, um, we have a knitting club. Um, when I was a student, the cornhole club was pretty popular. Um, so there are clubs where you can just find a common interest and then sort of meet and meet new people and gather and have some fun. Um, so with that being said, I will also highlight that we are a division three school. Um, we have 22 varsity sports um, and 20 intramural sports. So if you are, you know, thinking about, you know, the student section, I mentioned that we're super supportive of our peers, but you might be wondering, you know, do people really show up to the sporting events? And I can confidently say, yes, we will show up um, every single time for our peers because we want to show them how proud we are of them. We want to cheer them on because we are hopeful that, you know, if we were in the same position, they would do the same for us. Um, so whether it be a sporting event, whether it be a student presentation, whether it be a performance, there's going to be a pretty raucous student section and a lot of student support. With that being said, I will also highlight sort of why I mentioned performances. Um, so theater is pretty popular at Muhlenberg, um, but not only are theater majors allowed to participate in all of the productions, you can be whatever major you like and still be a part of the Muhlenberg Theater Association. I was a music and media comm major. I was involved with the theater department when I was a student. Um, and it's a really amazing you know, opportunity for you to get involved with something that maybe you wouldn't otherwise be interested in. You can get involved with the costume department if you've never sewn a day in your life. Um, you know, it's really there for you to sort of explore um, and figure out, you know, try something new or continue something that you maybe have done before previously in high school, but maybe don't want to pursue in a major capacity. It's also um, true for our dance department and also our music department as well. Um, so you're free and welcome to join any of the ensembles, get involved with any of the courses, um, and join any of the productions um, and the production teams if that's something that interests you. So talking um, a little bit about you know, where we are, where we're situated. So we are in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is the third largest city in Pennsylvania. So not only is there a lot to do on campus, there's a ton to do off campus as well. Um, so we're located in the west end of Allentown. So you get sort of the best of both worlds with being really close to sort of the hustle and bustle of Allentown. But you're located in more of the, the neighborhoods, the suburban part. Um, so you get, you know, trees, grass, a little bit of quiet, um, so you sort of have, you know, both of those things right at your fingertips. With Allentown being so close, um, you can imagine that our students like to get off campus and explore. Um, we really do encourage our students to leave what we call the mule and bubble, which is the, the, the blocks that um, contain our campus. Um, we don't want you to spend four years and never leave campus. We want you to explore, you know, Allentown and the Lehigh Valley um, and get to know the area that you're in. So a big popular spot that our students like to go to is the Allentown Farmer's Market. It's a quick 10 minute walk away from campus. Um, Chelsea and Stacy are shaking their heads because we also like to go to the Farmer's Market. It's a pretty much, it's a Muhlenberg staple. Um, and it's a great way to sort of 
take some time, leave campus for a little bit and sort of get to experience what the Allentown community is like. Um, you can get some great food there. You can just sort of um, just see what it's like to, to be in those great Allentown fairgrounds as well. Um, they're pretty close to campus as well. Um, so it's that's sort of one of our most favorite spots to go, but that's not the end all be all of what there is to do off campus. Um, so um, if you're thinking about, you know, how do I get off campus as well? Um, so with your ID card, you are able to take advantage of our bus system in Allentown. Um, so it's pretty easy to get off campus and we also have a shuttle service as well. Um, so it's easy to go and explore whether you wanna go to a hockey game, whether you want to um, take advantage of, you know, one of the great restaurants in the Lehigh Valley, whether you want to go to Dorney Park and ride some roller coasters, um, whatever you're planning to do, um, there's ways to get off campus and explore that. But that being said, um, we also are, you know, we put a big emphasis on engaging with the Allentown community and giving back to our community. Um, so a lot of our clubs and our organizations will have sort of a community mindset. Um, it might not be the sole focus of the club, but there's always sort of this idea of how can we do good with what we what we're doing here. Um, so I'll take my favorite club, the Knitting Club, because I think their name is so funny, it's the Knitwits. Um, and so their club is not, you know, solely focused around service, but even, you know, at the end of the semester, um, they'll have a huge sale where they will sell off, you know, all those crafts that they've made over this course of the semester, beautiful stuff. And they'll donate some of their profits to charity. So just to say, you know, even if it's not the sole focus, we're still always trying to think of ways that we can give back. So with that being said, we're always looking for ways to also invite the Allentown community to engage with us. They've welcomed us into their neighborhoods. They have given us a home. We're always looking for ways to say thank you. Um, and so our campus is not gated. We don't have a gate around campus. So we're, we try to be very open and welcoming to our Allentown neighbors as well. So we will have, you know, we have some fair type events, some carnival events. Um, we even have some days um, where we have a field day with a local elementary school. Um, so we're always looking for ways to not only engage with the Allentown community, but also to say thank you to our Allentown neighbors. So with that, um, I am going to pass it over to Stacy to talk a little bit about the application. Awesome. Thanks, Bailey. So Chelsea and Bailey just shared so many great things. And I know what the first thing that's all on everybody's mind is, oh my gosh, I want to be in that part of the community. How do I get there? Well, we'll share with you just how to apply um, as well as some financial aid information as well. So first things first about the admissions process. I think just kind of a disclaimer before I continue on with everything. We just have to say, we know this time is super, super challenging for students, whether you're learning totally in a remote situation, totally, you know, in a hybrid or fully in person, but you have to wear masks and stay distant from, you know, your friends and everything. We know this is hard. So just know that we are looking at you in the context of what this year has been, uh, because we, you know, we're experiencing that as well, being, you know, home as well. So just know that um, we're looking at you with that context and with that lens in mind. Now, I'll talk a little bit about just kind of the things that we're looking at, how we review applications um, and everything like that. So for us here at Muhlenberg, we very much so take a holistic approach to our application review process. So we know you're more than just one thing. We know you're more than just your transcripts or just your activity list. We want to look at all of those things because as Chelsea and Bailey shared, our students are super busy, both on the academic side and on the extracurricular side. And so we are hopefully seeing that, um, you know, in the in the application process too. Um, so we don't have any particular formulas that we follow um, or, you know, any specific uh, baseline requirements or everything like that. You know, we really are looking at you as a whole person before we do make a final decision on your application. So that's something to know about us here. Uh, but things that we are looking for, I guess I'll kind of say about the application process, I like to say it's similar to like a big puzzle and I don't mean it in a confusing or, um, you know, confusing way or anything like that, but more or less you're giving us a bunch of pieces and we're putting those pieces together to find out who you are as a student and as a person. So big piece of advice, tell us who you are through your application in all facets of it. So first thing we do require is the common application. So that's how Muhlenberg uh, has, uh, that's how students do apply to Muhlenberg exclusively on the common application. We don't have any supplemental essays or anything like that to hopefully make it as easy as possible for students to apply to us. Um, so just fill that common application out, put Muhlenberg on that list um, and hit submit when you're ready to submit that application. 
things we are looking for within that common application. Um, one big thing that I always like to tell students, please make sure, especially on that activities resume, share everything that you're doing. Um, I know sometimes the common app can be a little bit limiting. So if you are super, super involved and you have additional things, you can submit an additional activities resume, um, but make sure you tell us everything you're involved in outside the classroom, whether it's uh, a club, an organization, maybe you're a leader in, an, in a club, maybe you have a job or family responsibilities um, after your time in, in, in school. So um, just share that stuff with us because we definitely want to know what's, what's taking up your time after school. Um, other thing I know, um, the big question is the application essay. Um, and so for us, we love the essay. I know for us, so I know for me and my colleagues, uh, Bailey and Chelsea as well, um, that's our favorite part of the application because it's really us hearing the student voice. Um, so tell us something that maybe um, we haven't heard all their wise on your application. Um, you know, if it's about an activity that you are super, super involved in. I like to pick on dancers because I was a dancer growing up and I was very much a dance's life kind of uh, kind of person as well. You know, if dance is your life, you can absolutely talk about dance, but maybe tell it about about it in a different facet than, yeah, I dance and I like dance because I can see that when you dance, you know, 30 hours a week. Um, but tell me maybe about, you know, the bonds that you've made, the team, the friendships, you know, that kind of stuff or whatever, you know, is uh, of interest to you. And it can be as easy as, um, you know, making breakfast for yourself. I know I had an essay that I read, um, which was one of my favorite essays of a student who she was telling me about her, how she cooks breakfast for herself and how it really was just kind of a big start to her day and then, you know, starting to get into a routine. Um, but she did a really good job with kind of relating it to her everyday life. So it's as easy as cooking breakfast for yourself too. So it doesn't have to be super big um, events, but if it is a big event, you can absolutely share that with us as well. Um, so that's kind of the common application uh, in general. Um, other things and other pieces to the puzzle we are looking for are your high school transcript as well. So hopefully seeing, um, you know, good things there. Uh, we are looking at the breadth of your full four years. Um, so hopefully, you know, seeing you challenging yourself um, in any way that you can. So whether you can take any advanced level classes like honors or IP or IP, AP or IB courses um, or anything like that, um, we do like to see those courses. Uh, we do also get a school report from your, from your high school so we know what courses are being offered. So for example, if I just said AP and honors and IB and you're like, my high school doesn't offer any of those, we know that. So we are looking at you again in the context of, of what kind of courses are being offered. So hopefully seeing you challenging yourself as much as you can within your high school. Um, we, our average GPA, it's about a 3.41 on a 4.0 scale that is an unweighted GPA. So just for your knowledge um, in regards to kind of just our average there. Um, and so hopefully seeing, seeing good things. And you know, if there was a dip in a grade, maybe sophomore year, but we see you, you know, going up in junior and senior year, those are all good things for us too. So, um, so no, just one bad grade is not going to, you know, make a decision for us. Um, but hopefully we're seeing good things there. Um, other things we are looking at are two letters of recommendation, which are required. So one from your school counselor, as well as one from an academic teacher. Uh, so the academic teacher we do ask is in a core class. So that's your math, science, English, uh, history or social studies and foreign language classes. If you do have additional letters recommendation that you'd like to submit, if you have a second teacher um, letter recommendation, you can absolutely submit that to us. Or if you have an elective teacher or maybe a supervisor at a job or you know anybody who can speak about your work ethic and who you are um, you know, as a worker, you can definitely submit additional letters recommendation to us. Um, but just those two are required. Um, and then uh, other other piece to the puzzle for us too are test scores if you do decide to submit those. So Muhlenberg is a test optional institution. We've been test optional since 1996. So a very, very long time, over 20 years um, that we've been test optional. So that's something we've regularly practiced. Um, and when we say we're test optional, we truly mean it. We mean it for admission. We mean it for scholarship opportunities. And we mean it for honors programs as well. Um, and the nice thing, if you apply as a test optional applicant, um, there's nothing additional that you have to do besides just letting us know that you're applying as a test optional applicant. Um, and especially I know right now it's super hard to find a test um, or, you know, maybe got rescheduled and then rescheduled again and rescheduled again and then canceled. So we know that it's super challenging uh, right now to to find tests. So no, for us, it very much so is an option. Um, you know, I know there's always the question of, well, schools are saying they're test optional, but are they really like, do they really want to see it? For us, if we have them, it's just another thing that we take into consideration. And if we don't, we just look at everything else that you have. So it definitely is just an option for us. Now, if you have taken the tests 
Uh, we do accept both SAT and ACT. We do super score both tests as well. Our average SAT is about a 1250 and our ACT is about a 28. Um, so again, those are averages for us um, in regards to the application. And then the last thing I'll kind of talk about for the application is demonstrated interest. So for us here at Muhlenberg, as my colleagues alluded to, well, I shouldn't say alluded, we definitely shared with you, we are very much a school that prides ourselves on our community. And we get really excited about the students that we're working with. I know in a normal time, we're out traveling traveling to you guys, uh, getting to see your faces and meeting you in your high school, seeing you on campus, getting to chat with you in person. So we get, you know, really, really excited about students that we're working with. And now in this virtual space, getting really excited about sharing Muhlenberg to you um, over Zoom and in a virtual space. Uh, but we hope that students are just as excited about us as we are about Muhlenberg. And so that's why um, uh, that's why that uh, interest piece is super important to us. And so demonstrated interest for us, it's definitely looking different than uh, we probably imagined. But any virtual experience experiences that you um, take. So doing this uh, information session, you can check that off. Good job. You're already showing us that you're interested. But other ways you can join us for, we have other virtual information sessions. We have an open house coming up. We have our workshop Wednesday series program, which is a, a series of workshops that we do hold about the general admissions um, kind of world, not specific to Muhlenberg, but uh, presented by Muhlenberg people. But I know we did one on college essays. We had one about early decisions. So lots of great opportunities there. Um, if students want to explore our campus visually, uh, we have a few options for, for students. We have an on-campus uh, driving tour, and so students can physically come to campus and drive the tour, and we have a tour guide who actually leads you through that through an audio um, kind of sound bite, uh, but we also have a video component, so if you want to watch that from the comfort of your own home as well, you can absolutely do that. We're also offering um, some limited on-campus tour opportunities that are outdoor only, and obviously lots of safety protocols to follow, but if students want to physically come see us on campus, we definitely have those opportunities for you as well. We're also offering interviews in a virtual format as well. And just to talk a little bit about the, the interview piece to us. Um, really for us, um, it's not required, but it's definitely highly recommended um, for all of our applicants because for us, it's a way for us to sit down one-on-one -on -one with a student. And I always like to say we get to see the person behind the paper. Um, obviously, the application is super helpful in us getting to learn who you are, but even more, we get to see you on a deeper level through that interview process. And it's more of a conversation. So I know the idea of a, um, a uh, you know, an interview with a college admissions representative, uh, you know, it sounds a little scary. But I promise we're not super scary. You know, we really just want to get to know who you are. So we highly recommend um, those interviews uh, for all of our applicants. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the deadlines that we do have and kind of how students can apply to us. Um, so we have two rounds of early decision. Um, we, oop, I will go back actually. Oh, there we go. I'll do that first. <laughs> I skipped the slide. My apologies. But we have two rounds of early decision. Um, so we have early decision one and early decision two. So early decision is that agreement saying, you know, if Muhlenberg is my top choice, I want to go there. Uh, if I get accepted, I'm going there. So I'm super excited about it. So we recommend uh, early decision for those students. We have early decision one um, is December 1st as a deadline um, and notification there is mid-December. Early decision two is February 1st with notification between um, the mid to end of February um, and regular decision is February 1st and regular decision is that um, uh, non-binding uh, decision that students can say you know I really like Muhlenberg or even I love Muhlenberg but I'm not ready to commit just yet and that's totally fine as well. So those are our deadlines there um, and I will talk about the financial aid process um, because I know with the admission side of things uh, you know, the money piece is a big component to a lot of students' decisions, too. And so we know here at Muhlenberg, you know, being a, a private liberal arts college, we're not the most um, cheap option out there, but we do want to make uh, Muhlenberg as affordable and as accessible for all students as possible, because we do think, you know, Muhlenberg education is definitely worth it. And so we want to make it um, affordable for families. So you'll see some statistics on the left side of the screen. Um, but just to know a little bit about the financial aid offerings that we do offer, we do offer need-based aid. And so students will file their FAFSA for that. Um, and so that's how we will determine any need-based grants, um, if students are eligible for any state grants, as well as federal work study and federal loans. Um, so that students can possibly earn based on what information we receive on the FAFSA. Um, we also have merit-based scholarships, and those are a range of $1,000 to $30,000 of scholarships students can earn for their academic talent um, as well. Um, so students don't have to apply for those. You're automatically considered for all of those scholarship opportunities as well, um, as long as you submit a, an application to Muhlenberg, so definitely do that. Um, and then we also offer talent-based grants for students, so students who are interested in theater, dance, music, art, um, and film studies have an opportunity to either 
either audition or do an interview and submit a portfolio for talent-based scholarships. Those are $1,000 to $4,000 of scholarships students can earn for their talent. Um, as well as we do have four honors programs here at Muhlenberg and it's students that's through a selected um, a selective process. And so um, students don't have to apply for that as well. Um, students are automatically considered for those opportunities too. Um, and if students do get selected for those really awesome opportunity there, um, do get a $5,000 scholarship with that honors program. So there's a lot of ways that um, students can receive aid um, from us here at Muhlenberg as well. And the last thing I think I'll just say, um, just before we open it up, um, to if we have any questions, um, is to contact us. Um, us, you know, admissions counselors, we, our jobs is, our, is to help you guys out. And so um, whether you want to contact us through our admissions, our general admissions account, follow us on social media. There's a lot of great opportunities. I know our students are taking over our Instagram one or two times a week for the last how many weeks. So they've been very excited about getting to share their stories with current student, or I should say prospective students as well. Um, so get connected with us. We're here to help you guys through this process. We know it's inherently a stressful process, but no, we're just here to help. So um, just want to leave it at that. Um, but ready to open up if we have have any questions. I think we had a couple really great questions into our Q and A. Um, so just to kick it off, um, we had a question about study abroad and how many of our students study abroad, um, and what are the options looking like. I don't know yeah, if anyone uh, wants to start, I can also talk about my own study abroad experience. Yeah, well. I'll give some of the factual side. You can give the anecdotal. Um, but yeah, if study abroad is really popular for our students. It's close to 60% of students who will go abroad during their time on campus. Um, most students go for one semester. You can go for two. You can also do one of our short-term abroad programs where you travel with your class and, and faculty member and get to kind of experience a site um, you know, during a break throughout the school year. Um, but really, I think it's great to know that like there are no certain popular programs, right? Like our students really take advantage of the breadth that we have in terms of study abroad. So we have over 125 approved programs that go to 50 different countries right now. Um, and obviously things are on pause during COVID, but most students tend to go abroad during their junior year. So certainly have a little bit of time to hope that things get back to normal and we're able to travel. Um, even for certain academic majors, like you might think, oh, I'm pre-med, I can't go abroad. Yes, you can. We certainly have a handful of approved programs there in London and Copenhagen. Um, same thing for theater. There's programs in Italy and London and New York City, which is a domestic option. Um, and again, just to know just how exciting they are, you, know, you get these really amazing opportunities to immerse yourself and, and to still be counting credits towards your graduation, which is also key. And any financial aid and scholarship goes abroad with you, which I'm sure parents and guardians will be pretty happy to hear about. Uh, but yeah, Bailey, you can tell us about your experience. Sure, so I could probably talk about study abroad until you know I'm blue in the face. Um, but I, I got to study abroad with one of the major specific programs. So I was a music major and I went to Vienna, Austria for a semester. Um, but like Chelsea said, you don't you don't have to go to a major specific program if you don't want to. Um, you can, you know, choose to, you know, if you your dream is to study abroad in Australia, then it doesn't matter, you know, if you are, you know, a theater major or a bio major, we're gonna try our best to make that happen for you. Um, and one of the other really cool things about studying abroad at Muhlenberg is that all of your credits will transfer back with you when you study abroad. So when you come back, you don't feel like you're playing a game of catch up with everybody. Um, but yeah, the, the study abroad office also makes the, the process very, you know, sort of stress-free. It seems, it seems like you're getting all of these things ready and it should be this very stressful process, but they really take that out of it um, so that you just get excited for everything. Um, they really give you, you know, so many opportunities to engage with them, you know, learn about different programs, learn which one is gonna be the best for you. Um, and then you just have, you know, a couple months to get really excited about going. Um, but yes, that that is um, sort of, I think, study abroad in a nutshell there without going too far into, you know, how awesome I think study abroad is. Um, but I, we do have another question um, regarding campus food of just how's the food on campus. Um, so I can sort of just tell you right now, um, the food is pretty good. Um, we're currently number one in PA for best campus food and number 17th in the country for best campus food. Um, and I think part of the reason that that is you know highly ranked is because we're a pretty accommodating dining hall. Um, so whether you are vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, nut-free, dairy-free, whether you keep kosher, you actually have options. 
and you have options that are good and warm and hot food. You don't just sort of have to fend for yourself at the salad bar every day or eat dining hall pizza all the time. You can if you want to, um, but there are other options available for you. Um, so I don't know if anyone wants to talk about their favorite dining hall dish. But I mean, it's not necessarily a dish that is my favorite, but I really love the blondies at the Nashery, which is our kosher dining facility. They're always super, I don't know if it's just they always have it this way or I just happen to hit it at a sweet spot, but they're always super warm, super ooey and gooey. They're very delicious, but they are very accommodating to students for dietary restrictions, also any allergies. So I know some students who are super, super allergic to certain foods, whether it's shellfish or um, you know nuts or whatever it may be. So um, I know a student who uh, is super, super allergic to, to shellfish. And so um, the dining hall actually notifies her uh, that they're gonna be serving that that day. And she gets a meal prior to their um, their cooking of that, uh, that you know, allergy of her so that she doesn't go to the dining hall that day. She knows that, you know, she can't go, um, but they're super accommodating and, you know, just emailing her a few days before and saying, hey, we're planning on doing this on this day. We wanted to let you know so we can get you some food. Um, so I think that's really cool about our dining experience as well. I think too, our food also reflects our values of community. I mean, by being so accommodating, we're basically allowing all students to come together to a table and share an meal with one another, which is really important. Uh, we also do a really thoughtful job of using locally sourced produce products a lot, um, even things that might be grown on our greenhouse roof as well. Um, so I think it's exciting to know that, but then also just in terms of like food waste, right? For any major event, we do a really good job at using cold trucks, right? So that we're not able to just put out a bunch of food and it gets wasted and like, oh, well. Um, you know, we utilize um, entirely plant-based materials for like our to-go containers, right? And we have a system where students will bring their plastic to-go container and um, again, sort of being able to do a cycle with that. So I think it's also just nice to know that like, even something as like our food, right? Still reflects that like, we're not just thinking about our community, but also the greater community in terms of a sustainability impact too. Awesome. Um, and then we have one more question. Um, so this question um, is for all of us. Um, what's something that surprised you about Muhlenberg? So I don't know who wants to start. I can start if you like. Um, so if I'm going to talk about what surprised me, I actually have to go back to when I was visiting Muhlenberg. Um, so what surprised me the most about Muhlenberg was how much students, faculty, staff actually want to connect with you. Um, and it's not just sort of, you know, talking to you to sort of go through the motions of pretending to create a relationship or create a connection. Um, so when I was first visiting um, Muhlenberg, the person who checked me in for my tour was a student. Um, and, you know, we were checked in. I was a little nervous. It was my first liberal arts school visit. Um, and she she stopped and said, you know, can I ask you a weird question? And it's a super busy Saturday for tours. And I said, okay, you can ask me a question. Um, and she said, your name's Bailey. Do you know more dogs named Bailey than people? And I had to laugh because that is, the, that's always <laughs> what the answer is. When I say, hi, my name's Bailey. People say, oh my gosh, my chocolate lab's name is Bailey. Um, so I said, yeah, absolutely. And she said, I totally get it. My name's Zoe. And so we sort of had this moment it's a busy day, but she took the moment to sort of commiserate over the fact that of how embarrassed we get when we hear our names and then turn around and it's, you know, someone talking to their Bichon. Um, so it was just sort of in that moment, I was just surprised that it meant something um, to her to say that. She didn't have to say anything. Um, and nine months later at the accepted students day, she saw me from like across the hall and came to run over to me say, oh my gosh, Bailey, how are you? Um, and just that was my biggest surprise was just sort of the, um, the notion that it, it wasn't just going through the motions. She didn't have to say anything just to say it. Um, it actually meant something to her and it was genuine um, the way that she talked to me. So I know I'll pass it over to whoever wants to go next. Yeah, I think for for me, um, very much similar to, to Bailey in the sense of people are just very, very friendly and I think very, very passionate. Um, and I always knew that coming um, from Allentown. I'm born and raised, so I'm an Allentonian myself. So I always knew Muhlenberg is a wonderful place. Um, you know, I had friends who went here. Um, and my mom took classes at Muhlenberg too when she was an adult. Um, so when she's like, oh my gosh, Muhlenberg, they're just so nice there. Um, so when I came to campus and started working at Muhlenberg, I, you know, very much so, right 
right away, people were like, oh my gosh, welcome to Muhlenberg, welcome to our family. And I'm like, that's so very nice, which I thought was, you know, just really great. But even as I work with current, our, our current students, I work with our tour guide program. Um, you know, it's just so, it, I don't know why it still amazes me because our students are amazing, um, but it amazes me that they are so willing to help with literally everything. I'll text somebody an hour later uh, that I have an event. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this in an hour. They're like, yes, I'll do it right away. Like no question, which I think is just amazing of our students. And I think it really just goes to show how much they love the place and they love the school and they love being a part of it and sharing it with our prospective students. So I would say that. All right, I know we're like just at time, but I'll chime in very, very quickly. Um, I think for me, what surprises me is just how much we really listen to student voices. I think, you know, when you think about college, you think about admissions, we always want to make things shiny and polished and like only show the best versions of ourselves. But um, when our students have a like a problem and they have a solution for it on campus or they have an initiative they want to start or they want to just say, you know what, we need something that's, that's more like this, right? They tell us and we listen and we don't hush them. We're not like, oh, no, we're perfect. Um, no, absolutely not, right? And so this is your school, right? We're here to serve our students. And so I think what surprises me is just the way in which we really truly listen to students and um, want to make sure that they're able to make change on this campus and really make it their own. So I know we're just about at time. Um, so thanks so much for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. Um, hopefully we got to share a little bit with you about Muhlenberg and our vibrant and dynamic community. But as Stacey had mentioned, please stay in touch with us. Uh, we love connecting with students throughout this process. It's hopefully you've gotten that sense. Um, so don't hesitate to be in touch ever. Um, we, we truly want to connect with you and get all your questions answered. But otherwise, thanks for joining us and best wishes for the rest of this fall for you. Um, stay safe and stay healthy. All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope all of you learned a little bit more about Muhlenberg College today. Um, we're excited to have you with us. So just a couple quick things. As soon as we close out, a survey will pop up. So please fill that out to be able to provide some feedback for us. Um, there's additional sessions, like I said earlier. So please feel free to sign up for whatever works best in your schedule. Um, and again, the recordings will be available on the website. So please revisit those, revisit this one and other ones if there are other schools that you're interested in. So thank you to our presenters and have a great night.